In this video, we're going to look in depth at an example for a left tailed test, which is another one tailed test. So I'm not going to go through all of the steps again. I'm going to assume that you have watched video 10.2.1, which goes through all of the steps. We're just simply going to follow those steps again. Here the question says we have a researcher that claims the mean age of women in California at the time of a first marriage is lower than 26.5 years, surveying a simple random sample of 213 newlywed women in California, the researcher found a mean age of 26.3 years. So again, as I'm looking at this, I should be writing down that I'm assuming the mean is going to be 26.5 years and the mean that was found was 26.3 years. And assuming the population standard deviation is known to be 2.3 years and using a 90% level of confidence, which means um, alpha, sorry, I got confused right in the middle. Alpha is one minus C, C being the confidence level. So one minus 0.9, which is 0.1 determine if there is sufficient evidence to support the researcher's claim. So what is the claim? The claim is the mean age of women is lower than 26.5 years. So again, even though I'm not to the step yet where I'm supposed to write the hypotheses, it's always good to think about what it's going to be. The null hypothesis is going to be the 26.5 that we expect. The researcher believes it's lower, whoops. <laughs> Now let me get rid of the equal sign, is lower than 26.5 years. The first step then, or step zero, is to check the conditions. We are given in the question that it is a random sample. Uh, sigma is known to be 2.3 and n is 213. So everything is met, and I think I forgot to write down 213 as one of the values that I will need. So n equals 213. So here's everything that I'm going to write as a summary on the next slide. So I've copied the summary to the top of the page and I've also included that the age is going to be less than 26.5 years. But basically on the last slide, I already talked through the um, alternative and null hypotheses. So I'm not going to talk about them again here. Let's go ahead and get our um, statistics figured out, which is the test statistic, the critical value and the p-value. Remember that this is a left tailed test. And again, we call it left tailed because it's less than. So if I were thinking about my picture, I know that in the left tail, I need that to be alpha, which in this case is 0.1. So in Excel, because Excel always calculates to the left, this one's really easy. I'm just going to do norm S inverse of 0.1 to find that critical value. And that's, negative 1.282. And then the p-value, uh, sorry, I think I skipped this test statistic, so let's go back to that. This is just the same z-score formula we used before. Um, use a calculator or Excel. Excel's super easy. Uh, just make sure you're getting those parentheses in the right place. Parentheses on the top, parentheses on the bottom when you're plugging it into a calculator and you get a test statistic of negative 1.269. And remember what I'm looking for is, is this value in the rejection region? Well, it's gonna be just a little bit to the right of that. So this is, should be a fail to reject. Um, also, we can find our p-value. Our p-value, again, is based on our z-score. And so um, I didn't write the function that I'm using, but remember this is just a norm s dist and because it's left tailed i don't have to do one minus or anything like that so it's just norm s dist of negative 1.269 comma one for true and that's where i get that value and again i just want to point out that our p value of 0 0.1022 is in fact greater than alpha which tells us to fail to reject so here's our conclusions all of the summary things that we've already found. To draw a conclusion, we are going to say with P greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Or again, if you're using the rejection region, you can say with um, 
let's see, what's Z? With negative 1.269 greater than the rejection region at negative 1.282, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. The really important part then is to say what that means. With 90% confidence, or you can say with a 0.1 level of significance, there is insufficient evidence. Remember, if we fail to reject, there's always insufficient evidence that this is true, but we always talk about the alternative. So there's either sufficient evidence if we reject or insufficient. Here we have insufficient evidence that the women in California are less than 26.5 years when they marry. Now, it's always good to do a confidence interval as well. So let's take a look at that interval. So again, the most confusing part of this happens when we have an alpha of 0.1 and so our brain says let's make a 90 percent interval which says use 1.645 as the critical value but remember when we're using it to support a test we're just going to use whatever that critical value was and we're going to use the positive version of it so i'm going to use that same interval formula which says this is x bar plus or minus my critical value, and then sigma divided by the square root of n. Let Excel do all of that work for you. And then we're going to say again with a 10% level of significance or we're 90% confident, whichever one you wanna say, that Californian women, when they marry for the first time are between 26.098 years and 26.502 years. Now, I want to stop before I talk about what that means, um, because we have an issue often with rounding. If you tell Excel to round for you, and I'll show you again when we look at Excel, this would round to 26.5, and then people don't know what to do, because is 26.5 in that interval or not? So it's okay to not round until you get to the end, because once I take this out a couple of decimal places, it's clear that 26.500 zero does fall between those two values. And again, since the hypothesized value of 26.5 falls in our interval, it supports failing to reject the null hypothesis. We've already done the test and the interval together and drawn our conclusion. And I just wanted to point out that again, Excel can do all of this for you. In our last video, 10.2.1, I went through exactly how I set up this spreadsheet. So I'm not going to waste your time by going through that again. I'm just going to point out that this is in fact a left tailed test. And in a left tailed test, we are looking at um, the negative critical value, the P value of 0 0.1022, which of course is just the area to the left of our Z score. And then our conclusion to fail to reject matches with what we had found previously. And our interval also matches what we had found and does include the value of 26.5, the hypothesized value, which supports failing to reject the null. Now that we've looked at both types of one-tailed test, right-tailed and left-tailed, we want to take a look at a two-tailed test and how that's a little bit different.